turning on and off groups inside contact, or muting them so that they aren't heard. You'd think that would actually be pretty simple in coding, right? Maybe something like, if this button is on, turn this group off. It's actually a little more complicated than that, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through it now using my Foalon library as an example. So if you wanna know how to mute those groups, stick around. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. We're back with another contact tutorial. This time, we're taking a look at how to enable or disable groups inside contact using scripting. I recently did a contact tutorial series, and in that, built a library called Folon. And one of the things that I did at the end is just dress up the library a little bit more to show you what you could do if you keep pushing yourself with further tutorials. The other week I took a look at the noise layer and how I created that. This week I'm taking a look at the tape textures and how I was able to turn off and on groups to be able to switch over to those tape textures. Let's take a little listen to the Foalon library to remind ourselves of what's going on here. So this is the Foalon library and right now in its basic sort of initial load, it has a particular mix that I like and none of the tape textures are engaged. Let's take a listen. wonderful, beautiful sort of sound. It's made from glasses and some synth plugs and some granulized textures. However, let's take a look at the mixer. Down here, we have a number of buttons and those buttons, as indicated down here, are for the tape textures. So if I flick all of these across, each one of these groups turns into the tape texture. Let's have another listen. Cool, right? You've now changed it into this really kind of worn down vintage tape sound. And the cool thing is here, you can turn those on and off and leave some of them in tape, some of them not. Use the mixer to blend however you like. A really cool feature I desperately wanted to include, but I needed to use some scripting that I hadn't shown you before. Let's dive in and take a look at the script editor. So we're gonna come up here to the spanner to open up and go behind the scenes to look at how I constructed this library. Now, if I open up the group editor, we can see all of my groups are here. I have the four initial groups, that's my bells, my plucks, and my two different pad textures that I created from some granular synthesis techniques. And then I have four more groups underneath, all of them labeled tape bells, tape plucks, and so on. They're basically the same samples, but run through these tape effects. And that's how I got the tape textures. I also have the ninth group there, the noise, which, I'll leave a link above and below if you wanna check out how I made that noise, because I did cover that a couple of weeks ago. Now, I have eight groups that have samples across them if we forget about the noise layer for a moment, but I only want four of them to play at any one time because the bells and the tape bells don't need to be played at the same time. Only one needs to be active. Of course, if I wanted to, I could put eight faders and just allow the user to fade whatever they want in there. But I wanted it to be a little easier than that. I didn't want it to have this huge row of faders. I liked the collapsed four faders, and then I wanted to use switches to change between the tape texture. So I used something called an on note callback. And that's something I haven't shown you before in scripting. So let's dive in and take a look. I'm gonna dive into the script editor. And as I open that up, it sort of shows you the performance view and where all my controls are positioned. But further down in here, that's where I'm actually creating the script. So you can see that this is where I've called into being all of the different controls and functions all within the on init callback. But as I scroll down, I get into my on UI controls and further down, I get into this new one called OnNote. The OnNote callback is actually what I used in order to make these group switches work. Now, normally what are OnNotes used for? Well, let's think about commercial libraries for a moment, big libraries like string libraries. Often they'll have different articulations. You might have say legato and staccato, or essentially long and short notes. Now those long and short notes don't need to be played at the same time, but you do want to be able to switch easily between them. And they often use something called key switching. That's where you take some very low or very high notes, notes that don't have a sample attached to them because the instrument can't play that high or low, and you use those keys as sort of commands or buttons to be able to switch between the two groups. For example, you might say C1 is legato and D1 is staccato. And when you tap C1, it changes over to the legato group and switches off the staccato group. And when you tap D1, vice versa, it switches off the legato group and goes to the staccato shorts instead. This is very common and there's often multiple switches, key switches that are built into the library. They're a very common way of working and, and people really do use them quite a bit. So they're used to seeing them there. I'm gonna do a video in the future on key switches and how to kind of assign that to a particular note. 
But for now, I want to look at just how we turn off and on groups based on the switch that I've set up. That's a little bit different. Now, normally when we're talking about switches, such as the filter bypass switch that I've got set up, we normally have some kind of if function. So if the filter envelope is on, do something else. If it's off, do something else. That's not going to work with switching on and off groups. Even though we're using a switch, the actual command to switch off a group or switch on a group or allow or disallow as it calls it in the script, that's actually not going to appear in an on UI callback. And it can't appear in an on init callback either. We have to use the on note callback. But we can still definitely use our switch to decide which groups are turned on and off. So to start with, I use an on note callback. And of course, my on note will always end with an end on. So at the bottom of this script here, as I scroll down, we will find an end on. So I've enclosed my code in a callback, and that callback is the on note callback. What the on note callback does is it does something if a note is pressed. Any note. If any note on the keyboard is pressed, something will happen. So if that's the case, if it's always looking at these notes and always trying to work out some code based on what notes I press, I need to use code inside that callback that decides what note and what is going to happen if that note is pressed. Now, luckily for me, I basically want to use the switches. And when the switch is on, I want certain groups to be on and other groups to be off. I don't care what note is being played on this keyboard. It's not key switching. So I'm not going to tie it to a specific note. A future video for that, I'm sure. So why don't you subscribe? But for now, we're going to take a look at how to tie it to the switches instead. So basically, I need to say in here, on note, it doesn't matter what note, we're going to do this. So every time a note is played, all of this script is going to be activated. Now, the first thing I've done is I've gone disallow groups, and I've put into there as the parameter all groups. Basically, what this command is saying is turn off all groups. I don't want any groups to be on. That way we're starting afresh because in a moment we want the script to then look at the switches and decide which groups should then be on. So we turn off all groups to start with, then we turn on a series of particular groups. After that, I have put in a quick allow group option because I have that noise layer. I mentioned before I have the noise layer and I'm not using any kind of switch to turn that on and off. There's a volume control on the UI to turn up or down the noise group. So basically every time there's a note, I want it to switch off all the groups, but I want it to turn back on the noise group and use that noise group. So once I've disallowed all the groups and turned the noise layer back on so it's all good, then I need to start doing the rest of my code. Now remember, I have switches on the UI. As I turn those switches on, they become tape groups. As I turn those switches off, they go back to the normal groups. So basically every time I tap a note, I want it to quickly look at that switch and go, oh, it's a tape group. Make sure that that tape group is on. Oh, it's not a tape group. Make sure that the non-tape group is on. And of course, that sounds like an if statement. If this, do this. Otherwise, do that. And here is a series of them for you. So I've gone, if tape bells is one, or basically if it's on, turn on group four, which knowing that this is zero based counting, that's the fifth group of mine. So zero, one, two, three, four will be group five. Else, if tape bells is not on, turn on group zero or the first group, which is my normal bell sound. So right away, if I play a note, now it's going to look at that switch. And if the tape bell switch is on, it's going to turn on the tape bells and leave the other one off. Otherwise, it's going to flip that and it's going to do the normal one. And then I basically copied that sort of code and done it for all the other switches. So we've got T plug switch. I've got my T pad switch. And I've also got my T pad 2 switch. So to summarize, basically every time I tap a note, it turns off all the groups, turns the noise one back on, and then it looks through all the switches and works out whether the tape group or the non tape group should be on for that layer. Pretty neat trick, right? This is how you get around the group not really having a mute button. You basically have to turn off and on these groups. Now you may be sitting there thinking, well, why can't I just turn the volume down on the group when I don't want that group there? And you could definitely do that. You could set up a button that sets the volume of that group to zero, and that way it will turn it off. That is definitely an option. And you could do that in the on UI controls using all the scripting that we've done before, and it would be perfectly fine. However, there's an advantage here to using this method, and let me show you why. If I come back out of the spanner for a moment and take a look at Folon Library, you can see I've got a mixer here, and then these tape groups. Each one of these sliders is attached to two separate groups. This first one, for example, the bells group, and the tape bells group. So it sets the volume of both. Now only one group is ever playing because of that on note control that I've got set up. 
So only the tape will be playing or only the bells will be playing. But this slider controls both of them so that whatever volume this slider is set to, it will set both groups. Now, if I tried to also set a switch so that it would turn the volume down and then went and turned the volume up on this slider, it's going to create some problems. It's going to cancel each other out, essentially. That tape sound you've just switched off, for example, will suddenly come back as the slider turns the volume back up again. So you need a way to be able to turn off the tape sound or turn on the tape sound. So that's why the on note callback and the, the code I've shown you today is far more useful. And it also is the bedrock of key switching, an exciting thing you could do in the future. I'm looking forward to showing you a video around that in the future. So why not subscribe so you get more tips like these for contact and I will catch you in the next one.